Hey guys, it's me, Bittersteel here, back with another video for Hearts of Iron 4 Battle for the Bosporus. Now today we'll be trying something that I've gotten quite a few requests for, namely Poland. And as Poland, what will we be doing? Uh, it's simple, we will be going for Bearer of Artillery, the old hidden achievement. To get the achievement, we need a hidden event to pop up. Now, before we get into this, going forward, there might be some inconsistencies, I've noticed. There are a few bugs on the path to this achievement that make it a lot more difficult than it has to be. I'll try and make it as cheese free as I can, but there is going to be some nuisance here and there. I, I hope they fix it in future patches, but let's go. We'll be playing as Poland with Iron Man mode on, obviously, and historical AI focuses on because I need to know what Germany and the USSR are doing. And we're off. But first, if you like these videos, leave a like and hit me up in the comments telling me what you want to see me try next. Also consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon that way you'll be notified whenever I upload more content. Other than that, we have a very cool and active Discord community. I'll leave links to that down in the description below. But enough rambling, on to the video. First order of business, organize the military. We have 40 divisions, I like to spread them out. Two armies and let's line them up on the border of our first target, the unwitting Lithuanians. Fun fact, even though the wiki says you cannot form the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, that does not invalidate the achievement. Your name changes to the PLC or Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth whatever but your tag stays Poland and the achievement only checks for the country tag so you can form that PLC no problem it's going to make it a lot easier to proceed because of all that manpower and all the extra cores now that said let's keep going we'll also train up a few of these horse divisions not because they're great but because they're cheap and easy to build just build eight and deploy them as quickly as possible so they spread out across the army. That will make it two full army groups of 24 divisions. Train these at a high priority so you get the army filled up and then we can start reinforcing it. Next up, research. Nothing fancy in research. I will not be continuously repeating what research you should be doing. It's pretty straightforward. Stick to the industry at the start, boost your industry until that's too far ahead of time, and then look towards doctrines, infantry equipment and the artillery. That's it. If you want to be fancy and you find yourself with a lot of industry, you can dabble with tanks. If you really want to, you can dabble with air. Personally, I wouldn't bother. You'll never beat the USSR or Germany in the air. So just, just build AA guns instead. Construction. I like to build up a couple of these civilians first, like three, maybe four. And the area you want to build in is the west here around Warsaw. Avoid building anything at all in Danzig. Yes, I know, Danzig, Gdansk, we shouldn't be giving this up, but we sort of have to, unless we want to fight two titans at once. So don't build anything in Danzig. Once these four are finished, we will follow up with military factories from that point forward. Speaking of military factories, let's get rid of those fighters. Well, the air is king and green air is glorious it's just not reasonable we cannot expect to outproduce the soviets so what we'll do instead is make artillery start off with five factories on artillery and fill up that line now going forward this is what i would recommend your production to look like you can always tweak this little move some factories around doesn't really matter the important thing is to focus on the artillery artillery takes the longest to produce and is also our heaviest hitter only a lot of artillery for what we're about to produce so artillery don't neglect collect the support equipment. We do need quite a bit of it to supply our vast army and tote anti-air. Tote anti-air is great not only because it helps negate the enemy air bonus, you can shoot down their cast like there's no tomorrow, it also helps pierce those shitty little Soviet tanks and some of the German ones as well. So it's free anti-tank. And finally follow up with infantry equipment. Yes we'll need a lot of guns, Fortunately, we do have a ready supply of guns in the form of our weaker neighbors. We'll take a lot of theirs. So infantry equipment tends to have the lowest priority and build some convoys. Now for national focuses, we will start off by strengthening the Polish state, followed up with Polish militarism, Polish revanchism, and then the defensive focus for those uh, bonuses to construction. You don't need to rush Polish revanchism. I know, I know. You still need to wait for 10% world tension before you can do anything. I just like to get this out of the way. So we'll strengthen the Polish state. Then we have a few airplanes. We won't be building new ones for quite a while, if we ever do. I'll just start off by setting them over 
over to Baltic states in case I forget later. Yes, we will be gobbling up a couple of our weaker neighbors when the opportunity arises. And that's our initial setup done. We set the speed to max. I'll let it run. And while the game's running, I'll talk about a few of the anomalies that might pop up. The first and biggest one will be the German behavior. We will be giving up Danzig. Now, in theory, that will make the Germans lose their claims. They don't have any yet, but they will get some through their focus tree. They will lose their claims on Poznan and Katowice. Unfortunately, due to a coding error, they only lose the core on Poznan and keep the one on Katowice. As a result of that, Germany tends to then manually justify on you anyway. They don't always do this, but they do this quite often. I have a few ways of working around that that I'll share with you throughout the video. And the second bit that's quite annoying, or rather can be quite annoying, is the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union can start to think that we're actually too scary to attack and they won't actually come for their claims or they will wait until 1941, even 1942, to come and take their claims. Not a great proposition. But again, we have ways around that. We'll see. We'll see. Now, ideally, you do want to be in a defensive war with the Soviets, just because, one, they keep the purge, making them even easier to defeat, and two, L gives you much better war support. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Again, just squeeze these cavalry divisions out as quickly as possible. That's the Polish state. Let's keep going. And time for our first PP to be spent. Now for our first batch of PP, you would think we'll look for a political advisor. No, no, you're wrong there. They hid one of the best advisors in their naval branch. Yes, we need the chief of navy, the old guard here, because he is a, a smaller version of the silent workhorse. 10% political power gain in exchange for some naval XP. I'll take that any day of the week. All right, we have all our horses deployed. We now have two full armies and we'll switch them over to the basic infantry template and the men can start exercising. Now you'll notice we have a ridiculous deficit of infantry equipment. That's fine, we'll solve that later. Now while construction is going on and I would like it to hurry along as well, I am going to start off by creating a agency. I do want an intelligence agency. If they ever fix the bug with Germany, this is not required. This is just a nice little bonus. However, I need an edge to keep Germany off my back so I need a spy and I need one early. Now in terms of industry could go for concentrated could go for dispersed. I like to pick dispersed just because of the efficiency retention. Every time you switch to more modern equipment you lose a ton of efficiency and we can't really afford to lose too much of it so I like to stick with this. Our industry isn't massive and that's going to give us a little bit of an edge. Excellent we have our intelligence agency and we'll have a spy soon. Things that you might want to research but I'm going to hold off until we have a few of more of those civilian factories built is the cryptology department and the unfortunately named pills. This one here is going to be great cryptology. Get those Soviet ciphers and you can break their lines really easily. But like I said, I'm going to wait until a few more of these civilian factories are built. And Polish militarism on to the revanchism. Going to give us a nice boost of manpower as well. And when picking spies, I suggest you look for these seducers. Seducers have the lowest chance of being caught and well, the spy that's not caught is the spy that's actually doing their job. And we will be placing our spy in Germany with the diplomatic pressure mission. This will make Germany more likely to accept things like a non-aggression pact from us. But that will be too soon. We'll just set him there and wait. Time for our next batch of political power. Let's bump this up to partial mobilization, shall we? Now, as that first wave of industry is finishing up, and we're getting the electronics done. This is where I start my doctrines. If you're not confident in your ability to create a large enough military to face the Soviets, I would recommend sticking with Grand Battle Plan. This will make your units incredibly powerful on the defensive and even give you good offensive capabilities, especially if you pick the infiltration branch, this will help your infantry be more offensive. However, I personally know that I will have enough troops to tackle the Soviets and I am going to go with the superior firepower doctrine. I want to bleed them dry. The superior firepower combined with all our artillery will just turn the Soviets into mincemeat. We also have 20 army experience this is very nice if you want to change our templates, which we will. However, I will not be switching over until I have roughly three to four thousand artillery pieces in reserve. And after Polish revanchism, we can turn towards defensive focus, mostly because of the military factory construction speed bonus. Once we finish the civvies, we'll be pumping out mills by a truckload. Later. As for our PP, I have 100 now. We could wait for 150 and switch over to free trade for those bonuses. While those bonuses are nice, it's mathematically better now to actually 
go to improved worker conditions, get our stability up. Not only will that prevent us from getting that nasty strikes event when we eventually go to war, it's just, I, I'll not bore you with the numbers. I've had people run the numbers for me. It ends up being better in terms of production as well. So if you have the option, pick worker conditions first. And if it's not available, then I suggest ramping up to free trade. All right, we finish our defensive focus and we can turn away from this tree for a little bit. Let's move all the way over to the left and start with the four year plan and work all the way down to the additional research slots. Extra research slots are great, especially if you can get them early. Now the civilian factories are starting to finish. I'll also get to work on that uh, intelligence agency, get the cryptology going. And our first target with the cryptology department will be the Soviets, naturally. I recommend decrypting the Soviets, the Germans and the Italians. And if you have any more time past that, and maybe the Romanians still probably be an enemy as well. Oh, there we go. Four year plan and the anti turn pact. Now, I always recommend joining this. This gives you a bit of a boost to German opinion and we need the Germans to like us, at least for now. Focuses. Like I said, let's keep going down towards the additional research slots. And whenever you have to pick between infrastructure and a factory, pick the factory first, then the infrastructure. I mean, it's just basic mathematics that will give the factory more time to produce things. We have another 150 political power. Let's switch it up to free trade. Now, this is going to require us to start trading for steel and whatnot. And I have noticed that if you're trading with Germany, they tend to be less likely to attack you because of their claim here. Now, this is probably just confirmation bias, but I'm going to do that. It doesn't hurt. I mean, it, it does hurt in a way. It strengthened Germany, but eh, not by much. All right, civilian factories are starting to finish. Now we'll follow up with a bunch of military ones, always building them in the places with the highest infrastructure. That way they get built quicker. And again, avoid Danzig at all costs. There's nothing to gain by building in Danzig or Gdansk. Now, one more thing I like to spend PP on, it's, it's 37, and we will be sending an attache over to the Chinese, obviously, for some uh, juicy military experience. I like to do anti-fascist raids now. This way, our fascism support will be low enough that whenever we refuse one of Japan's requests to take our advisor away, we won't take a stability hit. If it's above 15%, I believe, or if it's above 10, I'm not quite sure. You not only lose political power, but also lose 2.5% stability every time you say no to a country asking you to remove your attaché. Plus, it's just free stability as well. Well, free. You know what I mean. And the National Defense Fund. Let's keep going. The Chinese United Front has formed, so things are about to kick off in China. We'll hold on to this PP for a little bit. Not only do we need to send an attaché over to China, we also need to make some more goals. And timing is critical. And we can get our first extra research slot. There we go, Japan declares on China. Two things. First of all, we will be justifying on Lithuania. We will be reforming the Commonwealth, 46 PP down the drain. Next up, we want an attaché in China. However, they won't accept just yet, so improve relations until they do. I think this needs to be 15 or 20. There you go. Send the attaché and immediately stop improving relations. Army experience should start flooding in now. Now, depending on how world tension goes here, we might not just be able to take Lithuania, might be able to take Latvia as well. No guarantees though. I've been able to do this every time, but then again, not every game is the same and my experience is probably not exactly the same as yours. Now, as you can see here, because the anti commenter pact is giving us an opinion boost and we have a spy in place, Germany is willing to sign a non-aggression pact. Now, in the long run, this will be worthless. However, it will prevent them from breaking any truces in the first 12 months. So if we time it right, we should be relatively safe from their future justifications. And if we stack our units on that border, we might just be able to intimidate them into having to maintain it for 18 months. So it's definitely worth trying. By the time that one expires, Germany is usually too busy with the uh, entirety of the allies to really care about little Poland still being there. Now I do say usually, the AI has been very weird in the current patch. Artillery production is coming along nicely. Once we have about 3,500, let's see. I to change this template into basic seven twos to start with so that will require yeah 3500 ish total artillery okay we have our additional research slots what's next we will now be taking the leftmost branch all the way down to expand central industrial region so let's get to work I'm going to pick up military police as well. We'll need this eventually. And for the next PP batch, we will be getting the war industrialists to build those military factories even quicker. We are going to need a lot of them. 
And whenever someone protests about our attaché, just tell them to get stuffed. We really need that experience. Well, need is a big word. Don't really need it, but well, it's very nice to get those boosts to your doctrine. And meanwhile, keep working towards expand central industrial region. Roughly 90 days left before we take Latvia. All right, it's looking like our artillery stockpile is sufficient. Let's switch this template out. Now we'll be changing our templates to these boys here. We simply replace two infantry battalions with two artillery battalions. This creates a basic 7-2 division. Want to combat with, good attack, good defense. It's decent. It's more than enough to take out the AI. Ideally, we want to double these numbers, so it's a 14-4. However, production will not allow that just yet. Something to look towards in the future. Now, to take on the Soviet Union, this is more than sufficient. Well, maybe not more than sufficient. This is sufficient. Let's save that, and our weapons deficits are looking much better now. And again, let them exercise until level 3 again. I'm also going to start making some toad anti-air. We want to be able to throw these into our divisions once we're ready to take on the Soviets. And we have another batch of PP available. We cannot go up to war economy just yet. And going to war with Lithuania isn't going to change that, so no point changing that. I am going to hold off on spending a little bit of it, just in case we are able to snag Latvia and get ourselves a quick justification on Latvia as well. So we'll spend that later. Just hold on to the PP a little bit. Now it's January of 38. I am going to start kissing up to the Germans a little bit, just getting our relations up. I want to try everything possible to dissuade them from justifying on us manually after Danzig. Meanwhile, keep doing focuses. We need those factories from the tree. Looks like Germany started unschlussing things. So our time is ticking. It's February of 38. I believe it's somewhere around September of 39 when Danzig a war fires. So in a couple of months I want to sign that non-aggression pact. It will not prevent Danzig or war but it might just dissuade them from justifying on Katowice after Danzig or war just in case that once again their claim is not removed. There we go justification on Latvia is done. Let's take the speed down a little bit and declare and we'll quickly sneak these divisions here to the north around. Half of them can attack that division and the other half will simply just go around and take these victory points to the rear. The rest of the army can aggressively attack using the battle plan. So keep an eye on this. You want to click this button as soon as it pops up, preferably before Lithuania falls. Because the moment we click this, we get our cores. When we get our cores, we can justify a war goal for a core. And if we can justify that war goal, or at least start the justification before the war finishes, we'll get that speed boost as well. And we might be able to snag up Latvia. Yes, I know that world tension is over 25 percent but usually and again usually the allies don't justify latvia we I, I think it's because we haven't generated enough world tension and was because we are non-aligned just like them oh and a little bit of war propaganda to get this uh, war support up Okay, we can now form the Commonwealth and we're still at war with uh, Lithuania. We'll go to Latvia, justify on them for a core state, 80 days. So if you can avoid the guarantee in 80 days, we can take them as well, pretty much for free. So keep an eye on that. If a guarantee does pop up, well, too bad, we'll pull back. There we go, got some free equipment out of that. And we'll take Kaunas and Siaulai? Siaulai? Whatever, we'll take these two provinces and we'll leave them with just Memel. I think, I'm not sure, but I think you can just take Memel as well, but I don't want to risk it with how crazy Watch Germany us. is in this current patch. They just, their behavior makes no sense. And uh, well, I, I don't want to make it worse. And the fun thing is, these are all our core states now as well. So no resistance. Now, as for our non-aggression pact with Germany, we will need to keep an eye on what they do. Right after they eat the Sudetenland, they will do the first Vienna award, making Hungary a little bit bigger. And that's when we need to get that non-aggression pact. Their next focus will be demanding Memel and giving them the cores or the claims on our territory. And we want to get that non-aggression pact out before those claims appear. Once the claims appear, Germany will have a minus 200 penalty to any diplomacy with us. So that throws the non-aggression pact out the window. Actually, no, the first Vienna award. I keep forgetting what the first Vienna award is. I think it gives them Southern Slovakia and that uh, Carpathian Ruthenia. Three weeks later. I'm going to make another change to the templates here. I'm going to add in engineer companies instead of the recon. Engineers are much better at holding a defensive line and well, recon just isn't that good. It's not terrible, but engineers are much better. 
All right, justification is done. And they didn't pick up any guarantees, so it's free real estate. And a bunch of free guns. Excellent. Now it's 38, so the Soviets aren't going to be a problem just yet. So I'll just park them on the German front, just in case. Just to give off a little bit of a threatening aura. All oh, right, we still need the peace deal. Just take all states. All of this is our core territory anyway, so there will be no resistance and we get use of all of the factories. Now it's time to start squeezing out more units. I will train up three of these. So 24 divisions, three runs that will fill out this army and I'll start by training the cavalry because the cavalry is very cheap it's a small division we can squeeze out a lot of them once they're built we will switch them over to the infantry template yes we'll be running at a massive deficit of equipment for a while but since there's not going to be too much fighting going on unless we manage to you know snag up hungry early we should be able to get that stuff equipped oh and put these on high priority and force deploy them whenever possible uh, we have more political power available to us not a lot of interesting things here you cannot go to war economy anytime soon that will pretty much just happen when we fight a major some of these companies might be nice to pick up or military high command actually i don't think we'll be going to war just yet so i'll just start with something reasonable and elusive gentleman extra espionage now, anything else i would recommend starting with buffing the army the infantry expert and either the offense or the defense guy the defense guy is probably a little better to survive the initial soviet push but then again army offense 10 percent attack if you manage to catch them with their pants down and they still have that purge well we can roll all the way to Moscow without any resistance really. It's going to depend. It's going to depend. I'll, I'll come back to that. And we can now expand the central industrial region, that last free military factory. Now, since it dawns on me that the Germans might not actually be a threat just yet, I'm going to park some troops down south here. Both of my armies, really. I'm going to park them on these tiles next to the southern tip, Carpathian and Ruthenia. This is going to flip over to Hungary in the first Vienna award, along with southern Slovakia. That will suddenly give us a border with Hungary. And if we time our justification just right, just after they renounce the Treaty of Trianon, we can gobble them up as well, significantly weakening the Axis. Now, this is not required, and if you're feeling uncomfortable with playing Poland or you're not that experienced, I wouldn't recommend it. But I just want to watch the world burn. Meanwhile, our armies are starting to pop out, and we can start uh, equipping them. All right, we've expanded the central industrial region. Could go down to the additional research slot, but I think we benefit more from preparing for the next war. This will give us a bunch of land doctrine bonuses. Three, those will be handy. As you can see, Germany has started gobbling up Czechoslovakia. Their next focus should be the first Vienna award. So we'll wait for that. Meanwhile, Hungary has renounced Trianon, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the event should pop up soon. There we go. We got Salozy, that's nice. Eunuch agreement, yeah. They are fascist now, so we can justify on them with impunity, 150 days. Now, because they're a fascist nation, they won't be guaranteed by the allies and they shouldn't join the Axis either. So we can gobble them up with impunity. Meanwhile, keep deploying these uh, little horse boys. Once this army is completely produced, we'll have a full set. And I think it's an opportune time to start looking towards our military high command and get that infantry expert in. We're more than good enough for manpower for the moment and we won't be switching up to war economy anytime soon. Anyway, the next investment will either be army offensive or army defense, depending on your flavor. I think defense is going to be best. Then it's going to be the mobilization law and manpower. And Germany is about to do the first Vienna award. I'm not sure if starting Eastern Claims is going to give us the negative modifier or if that happens after they finish it. I don't want to risk it for those 70 days. I'm going to get a non-aggression pact now. And we'll redeploy our spies to the Soviet Union. That way we can start getting some uh, collaboration governments. I don't want to walk all the way to the Urals or Vladivostok to capitulate them in the future. All right, prepare for the next war. Let's head down to the Romanian Brithead strategy. Pick up two more bonuses for Doctrine. Ah, my timing was off. So they first get Southern Slovakia and then they get Carpathian Ruthenia in another deal. So I might have mistimed this, but we'll see. It's valid for about 60 days, so we have a little bit of leeway. I've also adjusted my production a bit. Uh, support equipment and Toro artillery, a few more factories and taking them out of infantry equipment. Infantry equipment is the easiest and quickest to produce anyway. Besides, we should be able to steal quite a bit from the Hungarians. So we're working on our equipment deficit. The numbers are quite red, but we should be able to fix them before the beast from the east comes rolling in. We have five armies of seven twos ready for combat. Well, mostly ready for combat. They need a little bit of work, but we do have the time. All right, defense of Poland on to the Romanian bridgehead strategy. All right, the Germans claim Memel. Yeah, it's fine. You can have Memel. And as you can see here, they get their claims on Danzig, get a claim on Poznan and the claim on Katowice. 
When we give up Danzig, naturally that claim goes away. I think they get a core. Poznan also goes away. And even though the event says Katowice goes away, this one very often, and I think almost always, stays, making them justify on us. I hope that non-aggression pact will be in place long enough for them not to do that. And their next focus is going to be fate of Czechoslovakia. That will make Carpathian Ruthenia go to the Hungarians, giving us an opening to eat Hungary. And Hungary is very close to getting that war goal, so it's going to be tight. It might be too tight. We'll see. We'll see. Like, again, this isn't required. This is just me doing something silly because I'm bored. Meanwhile, I am deploying all my units to the German border just to make ourselves look a little bit more threatening than we realistically are. The AI takes threat into account when making decisions and I want them to decide not to justify on us. Meanwhile, we can modify our government some more. Time for chief of the army. Could go for army offense or army defense. Offense, defense, offense, defense. I think defense is going to be better here. We will have to survive the red tide before we can do anything. Meanwhile, let's start preparing some collaboration governments in the Soviet Union. Okay, we have our Romanian British head strategy. We could move down to the Silesia or Hell fortified area, but Hell will bypass once we give up Danzig. So that gives us access to artillery modernization. We can get that. Uh, also note, we need artillery modernization for the event to pop up for our little bear Wojtek. I forgot to mention that. So this is something you want, but uh, I'm not going to take one of these. This will bypass. It's going to be much easier. Instead, I will develop the Upper Silesia for another factory. And our next batch of PP will be spent on improving worker conditions because I don't really want to be affected by negative stability too long. There we go, fate of Czechoslovakia and our timing is just just right. Fate of Czechoslovakia has fired. Hungary has gotten this land. And just on this day, our um, war goal is about to expire. So let's quickly declare and get ourselves a bit of Hungary. And because they just got the territory as well, they don't have any troops in the area yet. Let's quickly exploit that to rush our divisions in. That way we don't have to fight our way through mountains. Get our air force in position as well. Yeah. The Hungarians are showing up, but they've been strategically redeploying and they're super weak now. And we've already pushed through the mountainous tiles. So the rest of the area should be easy enough to take. And there goes Hungary, giving us 23,000 guns. 24 almost. There's no point in conquering the area though, so we might as well just turn it into a puppet. There we go. Nice little puppet regime. We're gonna squeeze some factories out of these guys later on. And time to redeploy those troops to the German border as well. It's gonna be time when we need to ship these guys off to the Russian border, but until that's happened, I want to be as threatening as I can to Mr. Uh, Mustache Man. Well, that's nice, the United Kingdom. That's very nice. Time to improve worker conditions, push our stability up some more. And because of that, great great boon in infantry equipment. Gonna shift some more towards support equipment. All right, we've developed Upper Silesia. We could go down to internationalism or Poland first. These two give us some stability. Between the seas concept lets us make a faction. These are not interesting at all. You could go for internationalism and then head down here towards liberalism and closer to Britain in case you want to sneak your way into the allies at some point. But this will make you have to deal with democracy and we have to stay non-aligned. So I'm going to go for my second research slot down here. The cyclometer. Now there you go. We've been guaranteed by France now as well and the Germans are justifying on us. Yes, Danzig or war is being done. Doesn't matter we'll simply give up Danzig. Meanwhile the USSR is Molotov Ribbentrop pacting. All right so now we will proceed until the Russians demand the east. Only problem with that is we cannot be too threatening. If they think we're too tough they might not actually declare. And two 
Germany might still justify on us. So I'm keeping my troops in place until well after Danziger War to make that uh, non-aggression pact last as long as possible, just so they don't get any funky ideas. All right, first collaboration done, and we'll keep working towards fresh ones. Uh, you want to get at least one, right? I'd recommend getting at least one collaboration in the Soviet Union, just to prevent you having to walk all the way past the Ural Mountains, really. Anything else is just a big bonus. All right, here we go, Danzig or war, and to make it easy on ourselves, We'll just give up Danzig for now. Now, if you can read this event, it will say they get a core on Danzig, sure. And they would lose their claim on Poznan and Katowice. Let's click that and see what actually happens. So, they get Danzig, as expected. They lose the claim on Poznan. But, of course, because Paradox can't code, they keep the claim on Katowice. This is the critical bit. At this point, uh, we must be threatening enough to Germany and maintain that non-aggression pact to give them enough reasons not to justify on us. So I'm going to keep my entire military on this German border and for as long as possible just to keep that non-aggression pact going. Ideally, I'd shift everything to the Russian border now to start building entrenchment and whatnot, but uh, I really cannot afford the Germans getting involved as well. So we keep the military on this side, looking very tough and imposing. It also makes sure that the non-aggression pact stays on as long as possible. If we can last until the Germans decide to actually fight France and the United Kingdom, we should be fine. At that point, they'll be too busy to really start picking fights with us as well, because we will look very impressive to them. And as for focuses, we'll keep going for that extra research slot. And the hell fortified area got bypassed, meaning we can get artillery modernization soon. When this event pops up, eastward expansion, there are two options. One is to turn towards the Axis. Um, it gives us a bit of uh, acceptance for fascist diplomacy. That's probably nice if you keep Germany on your side. But it also boosts daily fascism support, something we don't want because we have to stay non-aligned. We also get a few claims. Those are irrelevant. We have course there anyway, as Poland, Lithuania. And the other option just gives us a small opinion boost with the Soviet Union. So I suggest uh, just work diplomatically with the Soviets. It doesn't give you a national spirit that will force you to start balancing fascist and non-aligned support. It's a, it's a bit of a headache. I'm going to change our templates a little bit more. Let's throw in some support anti-air. Looking at our stockpiles, we're not too far off now. Just support equipment, really. Let's spend some more PP improving our country. Could hold on to a bit to get ourselves a war economy, but uh, we should have time. We should have time. I'm gonna ramp up to limited conscription because we are rather short on manpower. Oh, Germany's kicking things off with the Netherlands and yep, Netherlands are in the Allies. All right, we should be relatively safe now from them. Mostly because Germany will be preoccupied fighting two majors. Well, one major once France falls. And since we have so much artillery in stock, let's also add support artillery, more damage. Now, Soviet Union has started justifying. That's our cue to shift troops to the east. Well, Germany cancelled the non-aggression pact. That was to be expected. Now that we pulled our army off that border. Now I'll just have to keep my fingers crossed, hoping they don't actually justify on us. Would be bad. That would be bad. And that's our last little research slot. Let's get artillery modernization. You need this one for the achievement. Plus, well, it's a nice bonus. I am going to hold on to our political power for now, so I have 150 available to switch it out to war economy when things come to blows with the USSR. After that, I'll probably switch free trade back down to limited exports. We are trading far too many of our factories away to Germany right now. Alrighty, that's two collabs done. I'm not going to do a third because the conflict's that close by. I just want to build up these spy networks. It's going to give us a big edge when we finally push out. Besides, this is starting to cost a lot of factories. I'm going to train a few more of these infantry divisions just to park them on my ports. I just realized we have ports that are unguarded and I wouldn't want a Soviet naval landing there. You can convert these into something more offensive when the time's ready. Probably update this to a 14-4 at some point once our um, supply issue is resolved. And we have more uh, army experience. That's the artillery modernization. As for focuses, we pretty much have everything that really matters. Could pick up some more of the air bases or some of the naval stuff. It doesn't matter. Pick whatever you like, really. I'm gonna get some equipment bonuses. Oh, Soviets have finished their justification. Let's see if they actually attack. 12 seconds later. Yeah, there we go. Everybody joins in and the Soviet Union has declared. 
Usually they wait for the event where they demand the East. Eh, they didn't. It's okay. A few things. We don't want to join the Allies immediately. First things first, we have to justify a Morgul on Iran. That way this thing starts ticking because we cannot start this justification if we're already in the Allies. Due to limitations with the fa Allies being a democratic faction, blah blah blah. That's resolved. Now we just wait. I recommend just not even joining the Allies at all. Let's switch it up. We're going for total mobilization. I'm backing that up with women in the workforce. No, no women in the workforce yet. Yeah, we'll need a bit more stability before we can get women in the workforce. So after this equipment stuff, I'll pick Poland first and ideological fanaticism. These will grant us 10%-ish. Bit annoyed that the Soviets aren't actually attacking. I have a feeling that they're intimidated by our strength, which is a bit annoying. <laughs> we managed to grab the Bukovina. Oh, that's it. The troops shuffled around a little bit and I see some green bubbles. Yeah, I think the Soviets are annoyed enough with us now to just start attacking. Now, because we have so many troops and they are a rather good template, well, I wouldn't say good, but it's good enough versus the AI. I've just drawn a field marshal order, put my troops in the front line. I am going to let this run at speed five until I start seeing some red bubbles where I need to to intervene. If that happens, just shuffle some troops around, switch troops in and out of combat. But at this point, you should be more than strong enough to just let the Soviets bleed themselves dry against your lines and then hit that counter-attack button. Maybe you need to do some manual micro here and there, but just pressing go on your field marshal order should be enough. Yeah, so let's not forget these port guards. The USSR might actually try a few naval invasions and we don't really have the reserves for that yet. It would be a bad time, so I'll just park these guys on a port. We do have a bunch of army experience now. We're gonna make that new template. And you'll end up with something like this. Maybe add on a few more support companies. Uh, logistics, very good, especially when fighting Russia, but I'll need more trucks. I don't have any trucks right now. So 40 with 14 infantry battalions for artillery battalions. Decent defense, nice soft attack, good HP. This will crush the AI. See how many I can make. Try and make 24 of them, but our equipment is going to start dropping now that the Russians are uh, chewing through our lines. Well, not chewing, they're, they're chewing through their own supply. We're, we're taking some damage though, nevertheless. All right, so we've finished justifying on Iran. We'll simply declare on them as well. That will pull them into the common turn. There we go, Iran has joined the common turn. Well, they're still suffering from the purge, so an offensive shouldn't be too difficult. It already thinks the balance of power is in our favor. Soviets realistically don't stand a chance. I'm just very reluctant to launch an all-out offensive, mostly because of how expensive this is going to be in terms of equipment. And their industry is taking a beating from those bombings. So I'm just gonna build up a bit of a anti-air infrastructure, hopefully, hopefully making them bomb us a little bit less. Looking at these Soviet bars, I think they've already spent more equipment than they're likely to reproduce. So I'm just gonna hit go, break their cipher, and see how far we can get. I'm also gonna switch out this guy for an army offense guy. We've uh, clearly switched to the offensive now.
Ah, nice little pocket. Not a big pocket, but every pocket's a cool pocket. I like pockets. Oh, looks like uh, my 14.4s are required down here. The AI always messes up this part of the front. I'm gonna switch to uh, construction repair, I think. Let's look at these casualties. Three, yeah, over three million casualties for the Soviets. And we've taken, ooh, well, 0.7K. Those are some casualties at least. Ah, we can even convince the Germans to give us stuff. Of course we are going to do that. I'll take whatever you can give me, Germany. I have to say, front line's getting awfully thin, but the Russians just don't have any equipment left. Like, all these bars are dipping. I haven't seen a single full yellow bar since we started our offensive. And meanwhile, we're not, not doing that great either, but uh, they're hurting much more than we are. Like, how is this war looking? Losses are horrendous on the common turn side, and, well, I wouldn't say horrendous. Not great, not terrible. Considering we're using 7-2s, this is pretty okay, and we'll get everything we need in this peace deal. Oh, just give up already, Soviet Union. It's over. Next victory point I take is probably it. Let's just go get that one. And that was it. No, no, it wasn't. Is that it? Oh, game's lagging. Yes, that's it. Soviet Union has capitulated. Now for the peace deal, we are in absolute and total control. Sure, they, they, they have a few things, but uh, will not allow them to get anything. Let's see, we'll start off by puppeting Iran. Next up, I'm going to take all of the cores of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. It should make us a lot stronger. So if I'm not mistaken, these are our cores. I don't think anything else is a core in the area. This is what we'll want to take. Start off with puppeting Iran because we need to either control Hamadan or have someone in our faction control it. Iran as a puppet will do and we'll follow up with puppeting the Soviet Union and end the turn. It's a good start. Now I'll just feed everything else to my puppet. Okay, so we got all the cores for the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth of Russia. So we're quite strong now. We have a very, very, very big Russia as a puppet. I think the UK got a few of these tiny steppe republics, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. Those are irrelevant anyway. So now all we have to do is recover from this. We did take quite some casualties in terms of equipment mostly. So we're gonna build up again and turn our full attention towards the German Reich and invade Italy. What we need to do now is to get troops here. I did a Latium or Tuscany, I believe. Maybe even Emilia-Romagna, not sure. All we have to do is get some troops to central Italy and that will be enough for the event to fire. Let's start building a bunch of military factories in the uh, well, former Soviet Union to get their uh, independence level down, get them down to integrated puppets so we can get the access to those sweet, sweet factories. Now we do have a bit of build up ahead of us. Not too much though, our stockpile is fairly okay. So I'm just going to try and convert as many of these as I can to 14.4s and then just drive hard into the German Reich. And not to mention we, we need to get to Italy. Probably gonna see some uh, naval landings there. We can piggyback off. All right, the allies are quite strong. They're pushing down here in the Balkans. They've got Turkey involved now as well. Turkey's in the allies. And because the UK controls most of Africa, they'll just start pouring troops into here. I think it's time we start justifying on the Germans. We will retake Danzig. When the opportunity arises, we will join the allies. If not, well, we'll ask for military access either way. Then we'll shift an army down south here to help maybe clean up in Africa and Prepare naval landing of Italy. That's pretty much all we need. We need troops in the Italian central regions. If that happens, we will get ourselves bearer of artillery. Meanwhile, to the north, well, we'll try and close the Konigsberg pocket as quickly as possible by pushing towards Danzig. And after Italy falls, we can all pile in on Germany. All right, let's get involved in this. So let's just declare. And no, let's not call our allies. Yes, it's gonna draw in Japan, doesn't matter. Blah, 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 there we go. First order of business will be to cut off this Konigsberg pocket by pushing towards Danzig, Gdansk. Fortunately, we do have a very large concentration of strength in the area. That should be able to do it. Germany immediately coming in swinging hard. That's, uh, that's gonna hurt. Let's start asking around for some military access. Meanwhile, our front lines are getting 
pummeled by the Germans, but we're holding, we're holding. Just gotta close that pocket, that will free up a lot of troops that we can redeploy. But the Germans are scrambling, they really are scrambling. They wanna get their boys out of here. And I don't wanna let them. Meanwhile, this army here can redeploy somewhere in the Mediterranean. This area should be uh, accessible to us. Uh, my Polish Legion might actually need a few of these uh, logistics companies. Oh, that's it. We have the pocket closed. More or less. Okay, time for some strategic redeployment. Push up to that river there. You can do that. And the other army here can continue to close the pocket. Just gotta make sure they don't make a break for it via the port. Attack that port tile as quickly as possible. I want these divisions destroyed, not redeploying. No, you don't get the run. You get the die. Okay, if we can keep the pressure up, those units will not be able to redeploy. But we cannot let them make it out to sea. Keep them in combat. That's a lot of German divisions that we can trap there. Meanwhile, the rest of our lines holding. There are some points a little more critical than others, but uh, I think Germany's gonna run out of steam before we do. And we've won the battle for the port. Okay, so how many divisions are trapped here? Ooh, that's a good number of divisions. It's a two, eight, nine, 13, 15, 30 divisions. 30 divisions trapped. Not bad, even if I do say so myself. Let's see, how many casualties did we inflict on the Germans there? 870,000 casualties, more or less. Nice. Nice. For minimal losses. Okay, I'll take it. I'm gonna try and sneak some troops onto Sardinia. It's gonna be an easier jumping off point to land in Italy. But uh, there's no guarantee that troops will actually make it there. I don't have a navy, so uh, I'm entirely reliant on the Royal Navy to get things done. I have to say the Polish counterattack has gone well. We've completely taken back the Konigsberg pocket and we're pushing towards, well, this river. I'm not sure which river this is again. Is this the Oder? I think it's the Oder. I'm just gonna micro my way to the Oder line here. It's a very good defensive line. Then I'll dig in and see what troops I can spare. I need to start preparing for an invasion of Italy. Italy is the key. Well, the key. It, it's where the achievement can fire. We need to be in Tuscany or Latium. 20 minutes later. Okay, we've gotten everyone to more or less dig in around the, the Dnieper River and the Carpathian Mountains. I think these are the Carpathian Mountains. Around the mountains, anyway. Pull those units off the line. Redeploy them here. Oops. I'm gonna redeploy them to this pocket that I'm going to expand and have to see if the rest of the line holds. All right, we have our transport That's boats. Nice. Let's set up this naval landing. I don't have naval superiority though, but eventually the Royal Navy should tip that. Yeah, every now and then the Royal Navy is gonna give us the supremacy we need. Meanwhile, I'm cleaning up Africa. Carpathians are holding. We're starting to uh, really hurt them here. <laughs> This pocket's just uh, kind of ballooned. I'm gonna redeploy these troops north, don't need them anymore. And the blue army can hold this. Well, Italy is being dealt with nicely in Africa. The Balkans are uh, starting to crumble already. We've pushed into legionary Romania with hardly any effort. And this is just a, well, one of our bad armies. I could easily swap these out for 14 fours and just crush them all the way to the Danube. But this is just busy work. The real deal will happen here. This naval invasion, once it can set off, will put down troops in Latium. We'll quickly try and push out the Tuscany as well. This should be enough to get ourselves the achievement. Oh, and to get us the achievement, we need the controller of this province here, Hamadan, 
to either also be at war with Italy and uh, in our faction. So I'm first going to make the Mizamorja, the Between the Seas concept, lets us make a faction. Uh, that will put Iran in our faction and we can just call them to war. They are completely isolated and are not in danger at all, so it shouldn't be a problem. Oh, poor Romania. Immediately just falling over the moment my battle plan starts up. Yeah. Well, G Germany declares war on Russia. Um, yeah, sure, uh, Germany. I'm very impressed. The only nuisance that causes is uh, Russia is going to get more freedom. We're going to gonna get more. Oh, no, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. Oh, well, looks like the Americans are doing their business in southern France and a little D Day up north. We've knocked out Romania and pushed all the way to the Danube in most places. I've halted the offensive. I don't want to overextend my lines. Uh, I'm, I'm still fighting Germany in the north. It's, it's just defensively, but they, they still have a lot of troops. Fortunately, we can finally get our naval invasion off. Yes, I know it's been, it's been quite annoying not being able to get our own fleet in position, so we have to rely on the AI. So in your case, it might be prudent to get your submarines out of the Baltic before going to war with Germany. At any rate, this is the nail in the coffin for the Italians as well, and uh, should nail us one achievement. Provided we can actually land, there's there's a lot of troops here. Oh, happy days. We've made landfall. Let's take that port and assist in the attack. Now, the achievement may not fire instantly. Rather, the event may not fire instantly, but it should pop up soon enough. As usual, just cut Italy in half. Behold, as I cut this man in half. Yep, there goes Mussolini. Alright, troop distribution half to the north, half to the south, and clean up. Okay, I'm beginning to uh, suspect something. Right, I know. I cannot be in a faction with the uh, Soviets, so I need to in <laughs> I need to annex the Soviet Union. Oh, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, something I forgot, the reason that it hasn't fired yet, the event, is because Russia here is still around and they are in my faction, the Mizdizimo Morja. Fortunately, I have been uh, building all of my factories in their territory, pushing them all the way down to ready at, for annexation. So once we have enough political power, we'll simply annex them and that should be all of our problems solved. So one thing I forgot, Russia still counts as the Soviet Union and they cannot be in the same faction. It's easier for your run to simply puppet Iran, yes, but take the province of Hamadan for yourself. That way you won't have this problem. You simply don't need to create the Midzamorja and Russia can stick around not in a faction. Very important. My bad. One eternity later. All right, let's annex the Soviet Union. Ah, delicious Russia. And the game's lagging, obviously. Oh, 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 look at that Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth. Mm, gorgeous. Now we wait for the event to fire. So we are now neutral. We have finished artillery modernization. We are at war with Italy. We are not in a faction with the Soviet Union. We have divisions in Latium. It has to be Latium, Abruzzo, or Tuscany. So. La Tuscany, Latium, and Abruzzo. Yeah, we have troops. Let's actually uh, up our chances, put them all over the place. There we go. Meanwhile, Hamadan, where is it? Hamadan here is controlled by a faction who is at war with Italy and in a faction with us. So Iran is our puppet. They are in our faction and they are at war with Italy. So we meet all of the requirements. Now, don't panic if the event doesn't fire right away. It does have a small mean time to happen, so let a few days tick by. Could even be a few months. There we go. Wojciech never drops a crate that is bearer of artillery. Unlocked. Minimal effort and we are ready to crush the Germans while we're at it. And for those of you who like a few history tidbits, this is based on actual events. That bear existed and that bear was an enlisted member of the Polish military. Supposedly carried heavy ammunition boxes containing four 25 kilogram shells for the artillery to the Polish artillery so they could keep firing during the Battle of Monte Cassino, known for its extremely high cost in Polish lives. Let's make Wojciech, a core commander. There we go. Let's crush the Germans. One final push.
Okay, Germany is about to capitulate. I think we're gonna end it here. This is just going to trigger an incredibly annoying peace conference. I don't wanna deal with it. I have a bit of a headache. We have inflicted 4.5 million casualties. I think we got our revenge for Danzig and uh, Poland big, yo. Poland really big. We got what we came for. We have our bear as a general and another achievement to add to the list. If you like this video, leave a like consider subscribing and check out the channel for some more good stuff if you didn't like it that's fine just hit me up in the comments tell me what i did wrong i'm always looking to learn and if you have any challenges or any requests hit me up in the comments i'm always looking for some more inputs and i want to put out another massive shout out to my patreon supporters you guys are amazing you are the heart of the community thank you for your support it's very very welcome this has been me Bitter steel. Have a good one. Goodbye.